A few years ago, I was rung up by a lady who had eaten some mushrooms from her garden, uh, and they'd been quite ill. They'd been to see the doctor who said that they would survive, but if they wanted to know what they'd eaten, um, get in touch with me. I have some experience identifying fungi, but I also know that it can be very difficult, and this one had got me worried and perplexed. So when Anna offered me the chance of providing a sample for her students to uh, look at in, in detail, um, this was a wonderful opportunity. To identify the unknown fungus, we worked with the Year 10 students and isolated some DNA from a small piece of the mushroom. And then we did some DNA sequencing, and this revealed the identity of the fungus. The great thing about the Science Camp is not only do the students get to find out about all the exciting research going on here at the John Innes Centre, but they actually get to take part in it as well. This year was particularly exciting. Phoebe and Sophie got to work with Anne Edwards to help identify an unknown mushroom that had made people really sick. It's just amazing. It's like um, it's just a massive buzz around everything, knowing that you're actually working on something that adults are working on as well, and you're being given that opportunity to contribute to it with a friend as well while you're there. It's just brilliant. Open my eyes to all the different opportunities that there are, like getting things published and helping people, and it's been an amazing experience. The students helped us with all the practical stages in the identification of the fungus, which we identified as Agaricus brezidolanus. This work has now been published in the Journal of Field Mycology, and all the students' contributions have been acknowledged. They are not a common species, this Agaricus brezidolanus, not a common species in Britain, and um, the, the specimens that she'd got were not typical, so that the ones illustrated in the, in the field guides looked really quite different. The picking and eating of wild mushrooms has become very popular, but of course you've got to be able to identify them before you eat them to make sure that they are indeed edible. And in this particular case, uh, identification was far from easy. Um, and uh, we now know that the, that the pale variety is quite uh, widespread in North Norfolk now. So the work has highlighted the, that we need to be extra vigilant if we're going out on a fungal foray. This is a mushroom that is not in the common guidebooks, but it does have the potential to make people very ill. And we need to get the message across to as many people as possible so they can be aware of the risks.